So today in this uh, next 40 minutes or so, I intend to give you a quick run through of some of the elements that show the shape of the book and the training that we deliver around this topic. Um, introducing that with where is project management going as a profession and particularly around qualifications. What behaviors do we need to be effective project managers? Moving into what is NLP? Looking at some of those behaviors as we refer to them in NLP as meta programs. Look at ways of developing self-awareness. This really is the doorway to, to learning. Talking about different maps of the world, and now it's important to try and understand other people's maps of the world in order to communicate effectively. The representational systems, which are one of the cornerstones of NLP, how we store our memories. Perceptual positions, looking at seeing things from other people's perspectives. Introduction to techniques for building rapport. Then we'll summarize, and I'll hand back to Michael, who will need through questions. To start off, why me? Why am I talking to you about it? How I got into NLP? Finding a bit, about, a bit more about you. Uh, I'll talk about why I wrote the book, NLP for Project Managers, and what you can expect to find there. And finally, a word of caution from a university professor named Albert Morabian from University College, uh, University of Los Alamos, University of California in Los Angeles. How I came into NLP. Well, like you, I'm committed to ongoing personal and professional development of an established career in senior positions in project management. Let me tell you a story of how I got started in NLP. During the early 90s, when I was head of capability in the nuclear sector, you pretty much needed a PhD or a first class honors in sciences or engineering to get an interview. But the human resources and training department recommended that some soft skills training should be taken as part of the graduate induction program. We've got some very bright people, including myself, but sometimes our communications weren't as effective as they could be, and you probably know what I mean by that. The modules chosen for this were NLP based and we got some pretty striking behavioral changes in my team as a result. One lady in my team in that first cohort is now head of the National Nuclear Laboratory in the UK. Another moved to uh, corporate communications on site, and I think one of them became the HR manager. So big changes from a group of graduate scientists and engineers. Those that know me know that I'm heavily involved and committed to continuous professional development and it stimulated me to fold NLP training into my personal development. When I moved to a new company and a new role managing transformation in the public-private partnerships, I found that I really needed to boost my skills again. Not the technical skills. I was already a level four project manager, certified project manager, fellow of the association, etc. But my soft skills around stakeholders particularly. I had guy hands the venture capitalist who bought the music company EMI recently. He was my paymaster. But on the other side, I had politicians, unions, staff, etc. And while I've delivered a huge raft of customer services projects before, ranging from SAP, CRM, etc., Gantt charts and risk registers had their place, and we did make extensive use of them, obviously, but they didn't help me to talk to unions about reducing their workforce by 30%. How do you get somebody on your side, or at least minimize resistance, when you're doing something that they don't like? And again, it was paramount that I learned to get into their map of the world. So I found that the approach and tool set in NLP was the most relevant and easy to apply, and that modeling aspects meant that I could continue to improve. As I saw people with skills, abilities, talents that I wanted, I could use these core techniques to model some of that ability. I went on to become an NLP master practitioner, a licensed business coach. I wrote my own book, NLP for Project Managers, and delivered NLP training courses to several blue chip organizations here in the UK and started to deliver courses out in Canada last year, and I'm open to start delivery in the US this year, and we're planning a training uh, tour through Australia in August. You can read more about case studies from those clients if you register on the site for newsletters. 
But for now, let's tell you what it's about. Firstly, let's have a little practice with this uh, platform and the controls. It took me 12 months to speak to 2,000 people face-to-face -face across the UK. But how many have we got logged in today? I see a box saying we've got 111 people in so far. Let's see where everyone's from. If you find that little dialog box that allows you to correspond, to answer your questions, etc., type in there which country or state you're in right now. Let's see what kind of a spread. When I did one of these a couple of months ago in the UK, we found we were spread about 20% was spread across the world. And these things get picked up by the social media now, as you know. Just type in there, and I'd, I'd like Michael, if you could, just to make a note of some of the places that are coming up and feed those back at the start of the questions. Uh, sure. Uh, would you like that now, Peter? No, if you, if you feed back at the end as people start to type and get used to the platform, and we'll just okay. pick up and you can tell me some of the weird and wonderful places that we might have reached out to today. Okay, they're coming in from all over. <laughs> okay. And hands up those who've already read my book. Use the little hands up button. Those who've already read my book, NLP for Project Managers, or been to one of my talks already, or been on one of the training courses or online seminars. Wave the little hands there. And for those groups, if you type in that dialogue box, what you thought were the most interesting and useful parts of NLP, what are the parts that are applicable, directly applicable, to project management right now? And again, Mike, if you'd just make a list of those and feed those back as we start the questions, just to see what other people think. I have to practice what I preach here and try and get into other people's maps of the world. What do you think is important about this? What do you think is effective? So why did I write this book, NLP for Project Managers? Well, there's lots of training out there, lots of good training out there, project managers, about the technical concept, concepts, technical, and the technical competences, the risk management, the planning, etc. But there's not that much training out there on the behavioral competences. There are many people out there trained in NLP. And I come across many people who are trained in NLP, and many people who have been trained are still coming on my courses. So they've not found out how to apply this outside the main area that NLP was originally used for, basically therapy. Most NLP practitioners, in my opinion, lack credibility in the business world. People from outside our world struggle to get traction within it. They don't come to our map of the world. I actually already stand, hopefully, in your map of the world, and I'm relating things that have helped me. If you pick an NLP book off the shelf, and there's very many, and I've probably got three shelves full here, you'll find that, without exception, I think, they're written around techniques. They teach you NLP. They don't really teach you to apply NLP, and furthermore, they don't teach you to apply NLP in your context, against the application that you need to do it. Please write in and prove me wrong and tell me some of these do. I wish they did. It would have given me a much better start. The book was reverse engineered from the training course we put together. We worked out what we could do in a reasonable amount of time that would be directly applicable. And instead of developing the course notes for that, for that we actually reverse engineered the book. So the book supports the course, in effect. And why did we publish it for the British Computer Society? You might see today that many books like this are self-published, what we used to call vanity publishing.